The Honorable Stuart Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries. Mr. Conrad Enel, Chairman of the NGC Group of Companies. Ms. Karen Dabisi, Chairman of Tringen. Mr. Magnus Ankerstrand, Head of Clean Ammonia for Yara International. Mr. Mark Lupan, President of the National Gas Company. Mr. Richard Delavasteed, President of Yara International. NGC Leadership Team, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Media, Well Wishers, Good Morning. My name is Fui George, and welcome to the NGC Tringen Virtual Signing. This gas sales agreement represents a significant milestone in the long-standing relationship between NGC and Tringen. Tringen is currently NGC's fourth largest customer and a major producer of ammonia via its two plants, Tringen 1 and Tringen 2. The signing of this agreement therefore represents a major milestone since it guarantees that Tringen will remain a major part of the Point Lisas industrial landscape now and in the future. This is good news for the NGC and great news for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. To tell us a bit more about this great news, please allow me to welcome Mr. Magnus Ankerstrand, the head of Yara International Clean Ammonia to bring remarks. Mr. Ankerstrand. Honorable Minister, Chairman of the NGC, Chairman of Trinjan, their Mark, their Richard. As the shareholder in Trinjan, Yara is very excited to be witnessing the signing of a renewed gas agreement for Trinjan here today. As a shareholder of Trinjan for more than 35 years, Yara is very committed to the industry as well as the island of Trinidad and Tobago. And as such, having secured gas supplies for the next three years in Trinjan is vital for Yara. Trinjan is an extremely important part of our ammonia network. And as the world's largest ammonia supplier and distributor, it is crucial for us to have predictability in our gas supplies from Trinidad. There is no doubt that the last year has been challenging for the ammonia industry, for Trinidad and Tobago, and indeed the entire world. COVID has had a severe impact in so many areas, and the ammonia business is not excluded. Also, the situation has been challenging for employees that we have tried to take care of as, as well as we can. With that, Signing an agreement today is an important element in securing the future for Trinidad and Tobago and for Tringen and a need for our employees. There is no doubt that the last year has been challenging also in terms of the gas supplies and the predictability of the gas supplies, which is extremely important for an ammonia producer like ourselves. The gas situation is challenging, but we have full confidence that the NGC is working diligently in resolving that situation. And that confidence has been strengthened throughout our process. There's also no doubt that it has been a challenging negotiation, but through the goodwill from both sides and also creativity and a willingness to reach a solution, I believe we have come to a contract that is beneficial both for Tringen and for the NGC, and that secures the ammonia production in Tringen going forward. And with that, I want to extend uh, my gratitude to Mark for his goodwill and stamina in the process. And I look forward to a, a good collaboration going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Magnus Ankerstrand, for those remarks. Let me now welcome Mr. Mark Lupan, president of NGC, to also bring remarks. Handing over to Mr. Mark Lupan. Good day, everyone. I hope everyone is safe. This is uh, indeed an auspicious occasion after quite a long and difficult road for a lot of people on this call. Um, I would like to, to keep my points brief and really have the speeches by the chairman and the, the minister. Uh, my role here, however, is to thank uh, the teams involved uh, but before I do that, I just would like to contextualize that the significance of the signings 
of these agreements have taken place uh, from discussions which emanated from 2018. It is now 2021. Um, and to put that further in context, it's, it's because we had the negotiations completed with the upstream between 2017 and 2019 and started to conclude uh, a lot of the downstream discussions um, with agreements back from 2018. This is where the Yara and Trinjen um, agreements uh, discussions had started in, back in 2018. And if you recall, the environment in which we had been operating at that time have been very difficult before COVID came along. And during COVID, there have been major impacts as a result of changes in the industrial demand and the global energy landscape, which made the discussions even that more difficult. In fact, back in December 2019, one will recall the Yara plant also um, being shut down um, after a decision by, by, by Yara that was taken at that time. Um, and there were very challenging circumstances in which this team, the teams have had to negotiate. Uh, but I have to admit, and I would like to thank in particular the NGC board for their support. I would like to thank the Yara Trinjan team led by Magnus Ankerstrand together with his members such as Richard de Labastide and uh, Anita Nivol. And of course, I would certainly like to extend the sincere gratitude to our hardworking team at uh, NGC um, with the commercial led by Vulia Kwanvi and the legal side led by Edmund Subrian and, and his team. So Without them, the discussions would have not um, be brought to this conclusion as well. So I certainly would like to thank everyone uh, for their professionalism, their hard work and commitment and persistence during such difficult circumstances. But I think we are all stronger for it. And it has um, provided a foundation for us to collaborate further for a greener future and our prior priorities is, of course, going forward, the uh, renewal of the upstream contracts in, in another rounds going forward, and the gas value chain analysis that has been done by the ministry. Thank you all for your hard work and uh, have a safety. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Mark Lopan, for those remarks. You really are a man of your word. You said you would give thanks, and you did that. You said it, you said that you would keep it brief, and you definitely did that. And you also said that you would set a context, and that you did very well. And now next we have Ms. Karen Darbasi, Chairman of Trinjen, to bring remarks and perhaps even build upon the foundation that you would have laid for us, Mr. Lopan. Let me now welcome to bring remarks, Ms. Karen Darbasi. The Honorable Stuart Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries. Conrad Enel, Chairman of the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago. Mark Loquan, President of the National Gas Company. Magnus Ankerstrand, President Clean Energy, Yara International. Richard de Labastide, President of Yara. Members of the legal team, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Over the past half century, Trinidad and Tobago has successfully built a gas value chain that allowed us to monetize our gas resources in a value-added way, in a manner which historically has been the envy of many. The development of the point leases model brought significant wealth to Trinidad and Tobago, and directly through employment generation, the growth of a support sector of service providers as well as through taxes and dividends paid, has enhanced the livelihoods of many citizens. Our natural gas-based economy continues to be a significant contributor to GDP, government revenue, and foreign exchange. Its continued success is therefore vital to secure the future of our country. It is consequently incumbent on all stakeholders to come together to ensure that the appropriate mechanisms are in place to ensure the gas industry is robust, resilient, 
and sustainable for the immediate term, while we as a country navigate the energy transition to a lower carbon future. It gives me great pleasure to speak at this signing of the gas sales agreement event as we all, as leaders, reaffirm our commitment to collaboration with industry stakeholders as we all contribute to the long-term sustainability of the energy sector. The Tringen assets in Trinidad were some of the first petrochemical facilities built in Point Pisces. Tringen 1 was commissioned in 1977, and just over a decade later, Tringen 2 was also commissioned. The two plants have a combined nominal capacity of 1 million metric tons of ammonia per year. The signing of the gas sales agreement ensures that Tringen remains a significant part of the country's energy infrastructure for the foreseeable future. And I would like to express my thanks to Yara as the manager of the Tringen operation for their perseverance during this negotiations process which ran for almost two years. It would be remiss of me to not recognize both Yara and NGC for conducting these difficult negotiations in a disciplined and professional manner. The ever-changing global energy landscape often makes decision-making difficult, but the signing of the gas sales agreement helps to mitigate one key aspect of the uncertainty relating to the external environment that affects the sector. As stakeholders in the energy industry, it is incumbent on us to ensure that the domestic economic environment is conducive to long-term sustainability and to create an environment which encourages investment into the sector, in spite of all the uncertainty. Over the past year, the global energy sector has experienced significant volatility and external shocks. And what we have experienced can only be described as a perfect storm. This perfect storm was brought about by low commodity prices and disruptions triggered by business disruptions, which arose as a result of measures which were unavoidable as globally in countries moved to limit the spread of COVID-19. The industrial ammonia market in particular experienced plummeting prices with a series of unscheduled plant shutdown in the U.S. Gulf and Trinidad. The larger ammonia agricultural market was also weakened, but less so due to its role in the global food chain as a raw material for fertilizer. The very way we are conducting the signing today is evidence of the change that has been brought about by the virus. The mantra within the industry is that lower for longer will continue for the foreseeable future. This is not unique to oil and gas, but also the LNG and petrochemical markets. The past few years have undoubtedly been challenging for the oil and gas industry globally, and specifically in Trinidad and Tobago. But with global vaccination programs underway, while we are optimistic that prices will move in the right direction, Concerns on the uptick of demand, which requires a global economic recovery, remain a real concern. Further, concerns domestically remain around the supply-demand imbalance in the supply of gas, which has had serious implications for the entire gas value chain. The good news is that we've seen continued significant investment in the upstream gas sector with further increases projected over the next few years. As leaders in the sector, we remain committed to the well-being of the entire gas value chain and confident that with collaboration, we can overcome the challenges. The agreement between the NGC and Tringen for the continued supply of natural gas represents a significant achievement in spite of the negative narratives we have seen. And today's signing demonstrates that commitment of parties to work together can ensure sustainability of all. Ammonia will continue to play a large role in the global energy and food sectors. 
and significant research has been done into the role it can play in the energy transition in the power and transport sectors. The long-term outlook for ammonia as a clean fuel is positive and bodes well for the future as Trinidad and Tobago continues to look at options to decarbonize and create a premium product that can be sold in international markets. We reaffirm our belief that through collaboration of all stakeholders, along with a relentless focus on improving the efficiency of our plants to increase our competitiveness and a view to pivoting into newer products, the downstream energy sector in Trinidad and Tobago will have a sustainable and vibrant future. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Dabesi, for sharing with us those, those remarks. Very insightful. Let me now welcome the chairman of the NGC Group of Companies, Mr. Conrad Enil, to also bring remarks. Handing over to you, Mr. Enil. The Honorable Stuart Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Ms. Karen DeBasi, Chairman of Trinjan, the President of Clean Ammonia Yara International, Mr. Magnus Anker Strand, President of the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Mark Lippon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. I'm pleased to join with my colleagues from the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries and of course, the Trinidad Nitrogen Company Limited, Trinjan, to place on record our sincere thanks for the successful conclusion of a difficult and challenging journey we started two years ago. Our event today signals the conclusion of a mutually agreed gas sales agreement that will enable Trinjan's two ammonia plants to continue to deliver value for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Trinjan, together with our other downstream customers, continue to be instrumental in cementing our country's position among the top ammonia producers in the world. We are therefore proud to continue supporting the company's national contribution through this gas sales agreement. Despite the challenges that confronted us in 2020, we have reached an agreement. This allows us to both plan our business with a degree of certainty regarding the future. The fact that we are signing this gas sales agreement while managing the risks associated with the global pandemic, market uncertainty, and a higher gas acquisition cost demonstrates the innovativeness and commitment of our staff, led by our president, Mark Lupon. And I wish to take this opportunity to thank them all for their continuing service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We are very proud of the men and women who are part of the NGC group. Despite our reported loss in 2020, the NGC was able to balance the interests of sellers and buyers, which we saw as an important role in keeping the downstream sector in a state that allowed us all to recover as the circumstances changed. This meant that in order to preserve the sector as an important pillar in the future growth of Trinidad and Tobago, we had to share in the pain of adjustment, something which we understood and to which we have responded. Our sector today is now in a much different place with significant possibilities to continue to make a positive difference to our country. As we enter this new period in our journey, we are guided by a few principles, which has helped us survive these times. Our principles are based on our desire to create exceptional value from the natural gas and our related energy business through our people and strategic partnerships. One of our objectives over the last two years in a hostile global economic energy market has been ensuring the sustainability of the domestic industry. Today, we believe that we have been at least able to hold the sector together as we continue to manage our numerous challenges. I therefore wish to acknowledge and salute the team at Trinjan, guided by Chairman Debesi, who created the context for us to report success today. 
as a company, we have noted changes that we must respond to in order to continue to add value in the new global energy market. Our analysis tells us that in the drive to reduce carbon emissions, there is a global move from fossil fuels as the primary energy source to cleaner fuel sources, including gas. In preparing for this future, there are changes that we must embrace. We must now move from being production-driven to market-driven, from fossil fuel energy to a focus on clean energy, renewables, and energy efficiency, and from increased levels of greenhouse house gas emissions to a future carbon neutral world. The NGC began its journey in 1975 as a pipeline company and over time has changed its role as it reviewed the global energy market and adjusted its business to compete and remain relevant to the needs of its founders. Today, as we continue the examination of our purpose and our relevance, we intend to transition to become an integrated international energy company. We believe our future sustainability is going to be achieved as we pursue the objective of being an integrated player across the natural gas value chain while aggressively pursuing the green energy agenda. We propose very shortly to provide our energy minister, the Honorable Stuart Young, with our integrated plan to achieve sustainability, which we believe is consistent with the overall policy position of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Once again, our thanks to all those who have played a role in getting us here, and to all others, you can be proud of the work of the men and women of this group who are looking at our energy future. In closing, I wish on behalf of our board of directors and of all our staff, to commit to the people of Trinidad and Tobago that we will continue to work to ensure that the future that we create is one that we can all be proud of. Thank you so very much. Mr. Anil, thank you so very much for sharing with us your thoughts. I would have had a chance as I listened to you to hear about the challenges over the last two years to get an agreement, to hear about the whole issue of sustainability, and of course, to hear about an integrated energy model, which is very good news, not just for us, but for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Let me now welcome to bring a feature address, the Honorable Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, the Honorable Stuart Young. Handing over to you, Honorable Minister Young. Thank you very much, MC. I'd like to start by welcoming this morning, <clears throat> Sir Conrad Enhill, the chairman of NGC, Ms. Karen Darbesi, the chairman of Tringen, Mr. Magnus Akestran, all the way from Europe, the president of Clean Ammonia, Yara International, Mr. Mark Loquan, the president of NGC, Mr. Richard Dilabesti, the president of Yara Trinidad, and to all the members of the media and anyone who may be following us here this morning on this momentous occasion. This is my first address to the public as a Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, and it would be remiss of me if I didn't start by thanking the former Minister of Energy, my good friend, close associate and colleague, and someone I learned a lot from, Minister Franklin Khan. Minister Khan and myself worked alongside those of you in the room who in the energy industry over the past few years, and I'm glad to see that his hard work and dedication has come to yet another momentous occasion in the continuation of the energy industry in Trinidad and Tobago. I'd like to thank all of you all, especially Yara Trinidad and Yara International for working with us over the last few decades and recently through very difficult times for showing your commitment to continuation of Trinidad and Tobago being one of your assets in the global portfolio for Yara. To thank Ms. Darbesi and her team at Trinjan for the work that they have done and for Ms. Darbesi coming in to the chairmanship with a bit of a push and for guiding Trinjan through some very difficult conversations and difficult times in the past few years. To Chairman Conrad Enhill, no stranger 
to the energy industry and playing this role that we really appreciate as the chairman of the NGC and the NGC group and guiding the board of NGC as we go through very difficult and turbulent times in the energy sector. To Mark Loquan and his team who have worked very closely with over the last five years and in particular now in my new role as Minister of Energy, who I look forward to working on in a more hands-on, day-by-day relationship as we continue to use NGC to guide the energy sector, the gas sector in Trinidad and Tobago to derive maximum benefit for our shareholders, the people and the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I don't think it is often understood as I reflected this morning and coming out of another meeting a short while ago. We very often use cliche terms when reporting what is going on in our energy sector here in Trinidad and Tobago. I'd just like to briefly put certain things into context. Very often we talk about being part of the global energy commodity sector. And very often I think when I read certain views in the newspapers and elsewhere, we in Trinidad and Tobago don't really appreciate what we mean by being part of the global sector. Let's use ammonia as an example. And Mark and Conrad would bear me out on this one. Not too long ago, in fact, Magnus, you would recall, and I would say in the last 24 months to 36 months, we faced global commodity prices for ammonia hovering around the 200 mark. It dipped below the 200 mark, was hovering around the 250 mark. Today, and for the last month or so, a little more than that, ammonia prices globally have been around 500 US dollars. This is significant, and it brings into context the cyclical nature of the commodity. Trinidad and Tobago is a maturing gas province, and this is something we, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, are very conscious of, and that is why today, is such an important occasion. And that is why it was important for me to use this opportunity as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago to thank all of you for your continuing efforts to continue keeping the gas industry alive and continue to have us as a global player in a very changing globe in gas and the byproducts of gas, including ammonia. Magnus, you all would have faced globally the last year, as the rest of us did, in a global pandemic and seen certain movements with your ammonia products that you would not have predicted because no one predicted COVID-19 and the effects it would have, in particular, on your sector. So that is why it's important for us to thank you and to thank Yara for your continued relationship as your partner now as a major shareholder, 49%, in Trinjan, along with Nell on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And as NGC has found a way with you all through very innovative and creative means. I remember when Mark and his team presented to me a short while ago on some of the thoughts as to how we could solve and get into a long, longer term gas sales contract with Trinjan. I asked, well, where did this come from? And the word I used was innovative. This is what will keep us moving. This is what will keep us going as an industry in Trinidad and Tobago, being solution-driven and solution-oriented. And that is what today is about. What you all have managed to do with our gas supply contract until 2023, and we is really remarkable in the current times. And I give all of the persons in the industry, the government's commitment that we are continuing to work full case ahead to continue our gas industry in Trinidad and Tobago. I have directed in the last couple of weeks in a meeting with the NGC that we begin the negotiations with our upstreamers and we will be pushing to get as long-term contracts as we can to continue the future of the gas industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Whilst they're dwindling resources, there's a lot of hope on the horizon, a lot of very interesting projects, upstream projects, 
that we are having conversations on, and I want to move it very quickly to what you talked about, Yara, certainty. Because we understand that to continue investing tens of millions of US dollars in Trinidad and Tobago, what we need is certainty of supply of gas. And that is certainly the government's, one of the pillars of government's focus in the coming months as we continue to have discussions with the major upstreamers in Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, there always is the promise of gas outside of Trinidad and Tobago in nearby territorial waters as the globe continues to change on a daily basis. What I ask you all in the industry to do is continue to operate safely as we continue to navigate this COVID-19 pandemic and continue to keep your operations going. Trinjan, continue to look at the potential markets out there. And two things I'd like to end by saying. One, we are all conscious as we move into green energy and this concept of green energy. There will need to be decisions taken. There will need to be capital spent to keep Trinidad and Tobago current in the global market. And we have opportunities because our plants are already amortized and practically paid for, whereas others getting into the industry now have to incur the expenses. Let us use whatever competitive advantages we have to take the industry forward. I'd also like it would be remiss of me not to touch on this point as I conclude. What you're seeing today, Trinidad and Tobago, is some difficult and hard conversations, strategic decisions by the NGC from since 2015. Because one of the components of what we've been able to also do today, and we've been doing successfully since 2015 come forward, is dealing with the closing off of claims, potential claims against NGC, and successfully negotiating that, putting it behind us, as we go forward into the future of Trinidad and Tobago. So I end by saying, well done. Well done to you all. I know how, how these things go, the many late light calls that we have. The Mr. Enil and his board, listening to Mark and his team at all hours of the day, sometimes having to wrong Robin discussions and conversations at board level at hours of the night. This is what Trinidad and Tobago doesn't appreciate, the commitment that you all give. The same thing, thing done by Mr. Abisi and her team at Trinjan, by Mr. Dilabasteed leading those for Yara in Trinidad and Tobago. Magnus, we look forward to welcoming you to Trinidad and Tobago as soon as we get over the current hurdles of travels globally. Because the next stage for Trinidad and Tobago that we'll be focusing on as a government is our downstream sector and making the trips to your boardrooms wherever you are and inviting you here for us to have productive conversations about the future in the next few decades of Trinidad and Tobago's energy sector. So well done, everyone. Congratulations. And you're seeing today the product of your hard work and your innovative schemes at getting it done to bring maximum value in difficult times to all of your various shareholders but importantly to the people of Trinidad and Tobago as we've secured today the continuation of Trinjan and its two plants in a global environment that is fraught with many difficulties and challenges. Keep up the solution-oriented way, and I look forward to providing guidance, leadership, and learning with you as we extend the tenor of Trinidad and Tobago in the global energy environment. Thank you very much for your attention this morning. MC, over to you. Thank you so very much, Honorable Minister Young, for your remarks. And thanks as well to all the other speakers. The remarks shared this morning will have allowed us all to get a greater understanding and appreciation of this gas sales agreement. Now on to the Q&A segment, an opportunity for you, a member of the media, to ask a question or questions of one of our speakers this morning to ensure that everyone gets an opportunity as well as to ensure that the session runs smoothly 
we just want to kindly request that first and foremost, you raise your hand to indicate that you're interested in asking a question. Secondly, once you are called upon, you identify yourself by name and media house. And thirdly, that you keep your question as concise as possible to allow for everyone to have an opportunity. Thank you all so very much for your cooperation with us. So hi everyone, the Q&A segment is now open. Kindly requesting that you just raise your hand and I will call upon you to ask your question. Looking for that first raised hand. Because I'm seeing Mr. Jewel Brown, his hand is raised. So I'll start there. Um, just uh, wondering, uh, to anyone who can answer, uh, one of the things that was clear this morning is the issue of the transitioning uh, the energy sector globally and certainly in Trinidad and Tobago in the context of uh, renewables, new energy, that kind of thing. And I'm wondering how difficult a transition would that be for a company like NGT? Uh, Jules, I will, I will take that question. I mean, thank you very much for it. It is a very pertinent question in the current environment. NGC has been around from the inception of us commercializing gas in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's certainly the government's intention to continue to use NGC going forward into the future to derive value for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. But as has to happen in all environments and in particular in the global energy sector, we have to be nimble on our feet you would have heard the chairman mention it, as well as the president, Mr. Lu Kwan, mention it. Right now, NGC is looking at many other potential opportunities, I'll put it that way, not only here in Trinidad and Tobago, but also globally. So you can be rest assured that we will continue to press and to push and to ensure that we continue to secure um, the future for energy sector for people of Trinidad and Tobago, and NGC certainly will be one of the platforms and one of the vehicles for us to do that. Uh, as a follow-up, uh, in the context of NGC, of course, um, there would have been, apart from the announcements today, of, of obviously, could you, Minister, give a sense of the overall state of play with regard to the issue of gas supply to the plants at Point Lisas, and also an update on some of the negotiations you hadn't been involved in, including the issue of the Dragon Peel. All right. I think right now we are quite stable on the estate. I mean, as you all, all know, Trinidad and Tobago's gas supply goes two ways, one to the LNG, Atlantic LNG, and then the rest through NGC to our pet chem sector. And we have faced some difficulty, I would say, in the last nine to 12 months, with uh, upstream supply that has been plateauing off, we continue at the ministry level to be driving conversations with our major upstreamers to secure supply going forward into the future. But right now, through the hard work of some of the people in this room, what you've seen over the past few months, if you all are following it closely, is a certain level of stabilization. You're also seeing some good news, for example, from BHP with some recent announcements of deep water gas, we're also currently in negotiations with Shell with respect to Manatee gas, which very often you ask about Dragon, but the Manatee is a real success story. And us being able as a government to de-link the Manatee side from the Lauren side to allow us to get into Manatee and to be able to produce the gas in Manatee to keep us going, that is a, a big accomplishment. And right now at the ministry level, we're driving the conversations and the negotiations with Shell to commercialize the Manatee gas. So I think things in the sector, certainly from where we sit as a government, are quite stable right now. We'll be working hard to keep it that way. With respect to the Dragon, nothing has changed. I, mean, I was part of the team that had gone and negotiated. We had negotiated quite a good commercial term sheet, a very good commercial term sheet for the Dragon gas. But as we are aware, due to sanctions, right now that project is on hold, but it hasn't totally disappeared. And we continue to see what takes place up 
north in Washington for guidance as to how we could pursue that in the future. Uh, just one other thing, Minister. Um, as you said, uh, the manatee field, uh, any sense of how soon uh, production could start from that field? Are you talking about months, a year, more than a year? The manatee field is going to be the sig largest significant investment in our upstream production in the past few decades past few years, let me put it that way. And right now we're at a very sensitive stage of negotiations and discussions. So as a Trinidadian, just wish us well. So hopefully soon we'll be able to come to market and make announcements, having been able to commercialize that. Can't say much more than that at this stage. Thank you, Minister. Take but care. Th thank you very much, Mr. Brown, for your questions. And thanks, thanks as well, Honorable Minister, for your responses. Let me now call upon... Mr. Curtis Williams, your hand is up, sir. Uh, yes, Curtis Williams, are you hearing me? Yes, Long we are. Yeah, Curtis Williams, <laughs> Guardian Media. Um, the, I have a couple of questions. First one to Mark, uh, Mr. Mark Luquan. Can you give us specifically what has been the DCQs on average for 2021 that you've been able to provide uh, to the downstream um, petrochemical companies. And secondly, the minister talked about um, some of the um, gas going to petrochemicals while others going to LNG. What is the state of train one? Is train one going to be restarted? or is the And if that is restarted, what is going to be the impact on, on the DCQs um, going down the road? And the final question I have is for Mr. Um, Magnus, Mang Magnus, I hope I have the, cor the name correct. Um, the Yara planet was shut down. Do you expect that to be restarted at all? Um, and is there a possibility for perhaps green um, ammonia to make that um, restart of viable? Or if you're just going to um, sell us, get rid of the plant altogether? All right, let me start by first of all dealing with train one question. Right now, the government is in some very sensitive negotiations and discussions with the shareholders of Atlantic as we look forward to the future of what Atlantic looks like. You would be aware that the whole global scheme, including LNG, is a, a very vibrant one and a, a changing one. So, for example, this morning, one of the first things I looked at is current Russian investments in, an, in, in the Arctic and the construction of further trains to deal with LNG. All of these types of things change the global LNG market. And so these are some of the things that we're looking at. Trinidad and Tobago continues to be very competitive in the LNG environment. And as I said, we are currently continuing discussions with, with the other shareholders with respect to the future of Atlantic. Work has been done at train one. But as we look forward at the future of Atlantic, one of the conversations obviously taking place is, are we going to be a four-train Atlantic going forward or are we going to be a three-chain Atlantic going forward? Is there potential gas down the line that we may even add another train when that gas comes to market? So these are some of the types of conversations taking place and at the appropriate time, we'll be able to say more. I'll leave the rest to Mark and to Magnus. Yes, good morning. I would just um, answer the question and Curtis, I, I think you asked about DCQs on average to 2021. Um, I, I would just say with respect to all the plants, there has been, a, of course, constant negotiations going on since back in 2018, as I mentioned. Um, and there's uh, different levels of DCQs uh, depending on the state of supply. So I would say with respect to DCQ uh, on the uh, contractual obligations, NGC has been meeting all the uh, daily contractual co um, commitments to its contracts and that we will continue to do in 2021. So I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a specific answer to the question, but I would say that um, all, all the DCQ and the aggregate amount is being met by and the obligations are being met by NGC. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, uh, sorry, I'll, sorry I, I was just going to say, Magnus, in fact, I would even add that over the last couple of years, it has turned out that, um, you know, when we're presenting to the Point Leases Energy Association, 
we are also presenting a picture of gas volumes and the inability to use some of the volumes in some of the plants, given there have been either unplanned outages or reductions and so on. And that has been a consistent message also to the point leases group, uh, where we can actually derive additional value uh, as well by trying to have, as you say, the plants efficient and reliable, which is on the downstream side. Thank you. Thank you. And then to, to answer the question about the, the Euro plant, um, it, it is not within our plans to, to restart that, that plant as it was with um, an, an operated. Uh, it was um, uh, the smallest plant, I think, in, I believe, in Trinidad, certainly one of the smallest in our portfolio, and also a very, very old uh, plant. So, um, uh, as as also the off taker of the ammonia, uh, our our attention and focus is now on on Trinjan. Um, to answer the other question, when it comes to uh, green ammonia, renewable um, or clean ammonia in, the, in different sorts, I think that's something that we're looking at with great interest, and uh, and obviously also looking into what what of the infrastructure. Uh, that we have in the uh, in the Trinjan and the Ara facility, uh, there can be utilized uh, for that, and that's of course uh, one of the benefits of uh, of ammonia as a carrier for clean energy is that you can reutilize existing infrastructure uh, as well, and, and of course you have to need to look at uh, ways of, of changing um, the the hydrogen projection and and the steam methane reformers. So those. Uh, those are questions that we're, we're definitely looking into, and, and I think Trinidad is, is in our portfolio when it comes to looking at, at those uh, projects. So, uh, when it comes to the, the key side, the tanks, uh, you know, utilities, that's uh, that's certainly something we hope that we can utilize in the future. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your, gentlemen, for your responses. Much appreciated. Let me also take the opportunity just to make a correction. Um, to my opening earlier, when I mentioned Mr. Richard Delavastide, he is the president of Yara Trinidad Limited. Just that correction. Good. Now moving on with the questions. The next person we have up is Mr. Ryan Davis. Mr. Davis, your questions, please. Hi, good day uh, to the panel, to uh, the Honorable Minister Ryan Hamilton Davis, Trinidad Newsday. Um, uh, I wanted to I wanted to take a look. Uh, well, obviously. Last year, the the, the 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 entire shock coming from uh, COVID-19, uh, it, it, it resulted in, in in a lot of problems for a lot of businesses, especially in the en energy sector. Uh, this year, having now gone into a new set of stay-at-home measures, uh, one would beg the question, especially when it comes to competitiveness, uh, how much of government's ability to, to manage COVID-19 how much of that plays a part in the competitiveness of, of, uh, of, of, of Trinidad's gas industry, uh, oil and gas industry? I would like the uh, minister, if you could, if you could speak on Thanks, that for, for um, a moment. Thanks, Ryan. I mean, good question. Yeah. And it kind of ties back into what I was saying in my address a short while ago. There are two aspects of that, right? One is the global side, because understand all of the output from all of these whether it be LNG, ammonia, urea, methanol, et cetera, those are going to global markets. So that's the first part that, of course, government and has no control over whatsoever. Fortunately, we have partners such as Yara, as you heard, who are the largest ammonia producer. So you look to those entities really doing the balancing, but everyone was affected initially when COVID swept the world and became a pandemic. So you had commodity prices changing, you had less demand for commodity. I mean, something as simple I always use is aviation fuel. All right, aviation fuel has suffered dr dramatically, sorry, drastically over the last year or so due to consumption. So these are just some of the global effects from a Trinidad perspective. At the government level, we made it a priority from the word go. We never shut down the energy sector. In fact, in my previous role as Minister of National Security, an area that I focused very heavily on in our COVID management from the word go on the instructions of the Prime Minister. And I think we got it done quite successfully, both PetChem 
which are all on land, as you're aware, they were always allowed to go to work and to get done what had to be done. From day one, I remember one of the first weekends in our COVID management, meeting now on the upstream, which is offshore, and meeting with all of the upstream CEOs and having conversations with them with respect to quarantine. Because, of course, we, we managed our borders from day one. We didn't just allow free flu. So working with the upstreamers, the drill ships that were coming in, making sure persons were quarantined, insisting that they're quarantining their, their workers who are coming from abroad before coming to Trinidad, going through the testing. As soon as they land in Trinidad, facilitating them going across the tarmac, being in a, a holding bay, and then being flown offshore so they didn't interact with the population. And I am happy to say that at every level in our energy sector, from upstream to midstream to downstream, we kept it flowing. And that is because of the commitment of the government, but also the commitment of all of the players in the industry. So I don't think we ever broke stride, even recently where we've been having some outbreaks on some of our offshore rigs, etc. continue to work. So at my level, working with the various um, personnel of, of the BPs, the shells, the parentos, etc., to make sure that things keep going. And I don't think, I, I don't think apart from maybe a couple hiccups over a number of days, literally a, a handful of days, Mark, over the last year or so, was the gas supply at all affected because of COVID-19. So I think that's really an area that Trinidad and Tobago managed extremely well because we never let COVID affect the operational side. We have no, no control over what happens with global commodity prices. Thank you very much. I just, wanted to, uh, just wanted to follow up on that. Um, no, actually, I just wanted to move on to another question. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think I understood Mr. Anker Strand's uh, 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 response to, to, to my colleague's uh, question about about Yara plants and so on. Is it that uh, the, 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 the the plants uh, in point 14 now they, that, that are not in operation? I'm, I'm not sure if it's clear that they're going to be shut down or if they're going to be repurposed or or, or what is it? What was what would, what was the plan for for these um for these um plants? Yeah, so so to revert to that, the uh, the old Yara plant is that was closed down um, a few years ago, and that's uh, and that that remains closed, and uh, we have we have no plans to reopen uh, that plant. What what I, what I was referring to is that we do. Uh, look into uh, different opportunities for uh, for for uh, producing clean ammonia, which is of course uh, you know at, at its infancy and and still uh, development projects. And and for that we may uh, at least in an initial stage use some of the infrastructure, uh, whether that's at the old Yara plant or 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 Tringent for that matter. Those those are early discussions still, but but a full uh, restart of, of the Yara plant. Uh, plant is, is not in our plants. Thanks. If I may just add there, Ryan, what I think has been missed, I haven't seen it properly reported and through no fault of anyone, is understand the age of the infrastructure. The Yara plant was one of the first plants built on, on the estate. And I think if I remember correctly, it is over three decades old, it's over 30 years old. And it has just outlived its, its natural usefulness. Also, if you follow us going on globally, there is now this global push to have green energy and to retrofit a plant like that to be able to meet the standards, the global standards that are required for what we call green energy. It, it just is not cost effective at all. So as Magna said, this thing was, the plant was closed down two years ago. It remains as part of an infrastructure, but it is there's no plans on the part of Yara to restart it. And that is not a reflection of Trinidad and Tobago. That's a reflection of the global reality and the age of the infrastructure. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I just wanted to jump one uh once more again. Uh just going back to just going back to the the the, the, the core issue of you know Trinidad's energy sector. Um, well, if we were to listen to the to the to the late great uh, minister, can we would know that we have gas. Um, we have deals 
coming in for for um for work coming in up to twenty twenty five. But we also have comp uh, competition, which um, the minister rightly noted in his address. Uh, and he did say that there was a, a necessity to, to stay competitive. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of the members of the panel can uh, answer this. What does, what would Trinidad need to do, even though we have this uh, supply of gas, to remain competitive, even though we have our neighbors right next door? And even if Mr. Anka Strand could uh, uh, coin in on this, what would make international companies stay with Trinidad and not say, well, let me pack my things and move to possible, to better or different opportunities. Hi, hi Ryan and uh, presenters. Just before you all answer, um, Ryan, we have a few other people waiting as well to answer, to ask questions as well. So I think this will be your last question. Thank you so very much for asking all the questions. And so, so now I hand over to the panelists to answer. Hey, let, me, let me jump in first before Magnus. Um, that is one of the issues we're looking at as a government. You would have heard mention here this morning that we're doing a gas value chain analysis. And in fact, the meeting I was in just before here was looking at how to keep Trinidad and Tobago competitive on the LNG side. There are a number of different factors you have to look at. Trinidad and Tobago has a lot of expertise. We have a lot of plants that have been put down, but we're moving into a new dimension. I come back to this whole green energy scenario and the moving away from fossil fuels, etc. What needs to be done to plants? Does it make sense, etc.? You're competing now with, of course, shale gas from the US. As I said, if you go on research, you'll see what is taking place in the Arctic and Russia and all across the world as this type of thing. So the government right now is looking very directly at that. We're in conversations. The gas value chain exercise includes speaking to all of the stakeholders in Trinidad and Tobago, Yarrow would be part of that, Trinjan would be part of that, to understand from each stakeholder what it is that they see as being necessary. But then also, to, I'll use this point to plug, that one of our jobs, in the IC as, as the minister representing the government, is we need to find a balance, because in that, we also need to balance what is best for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And you find every stakeholder, through no fault of their own, they're looking to maximize their own agenda and what it is they think they need, et cetera. And part of the challenge of the government is you have to put all of that into a basket and come up with what really keeps the sector going and deriving the benefit for people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I feel really strongly about that part. Magnus, I don't know if you want to add from a, a global, the largest ammonia producing world perspective. Yeah, no, uh, not, not that much to add. I think, you know, what, what is vital for us is, of course, that the gas supplies are stable. That's, uh, that's essential. If you have a plant, you want to run it uh, 100%. And, and ammonia plants are not particularly fond of being stopped and, and started again uh, because of uh, changes to the gas, uh, gas supply. So that's, I think that, that, that is the most probably significant part. And, of course, competitiveness of pricing on the gas is, is important too. But, of course, gas prices go go up and down uh, globally, differentials go up and down, and ammonia prices go up and down as well. So I think, you know, to, to pick out one thing which is important in, in the long term and in the ammonia business is really a long term business, it's uh, security of supply. Thank you also very much for answering the questions. Now moving on to Mr. Anthony Wilson, you've been waiting for quite a while, Mr. Wilson. Thank you very much for your patience. Anthony, your mic, don't put his mic on. Yeah, can we just kindly unmute Mr. Yeah. Wilson? Yeah, Hi, good. hearing me? Hearing me now? Yes, yes we are. Loud and clear. <clears throat> okay, so I have a couple of questions. If the first one is uh, to clarify the length of this contract, the term of the contract, because the minister referred to contract until 2023, uh, but there, were, there was another reference earlier to a three-year contract. So um, is, it, is it two years or is it three years? I'll, I will ask either Mark or, or Karen to answer that. But Anthony, what you have to realize is it could be a three-year contract with a retroactive portion. Eh? So I suspect that is what it is. So I suspect, and I'll allow them to answer, but it is a three-year contract ending in 2023. But understand these negotiations have been taking place. 
so they would have been a sort of covering or retroactive period. Mark? Well, I would certainly, um, I think that's that's correct, uh, Minister. And um, the, the, the bottom line is that we have said in the public domain that we don't have sight of gas beyond 2023. Correct. Uh, so, and, and normally we don't comment on specific contracts, terms and volumes and, and different things like that or retroactivity. Um, but that is a fact that we've already stated uh, quite a few times. Thanks, okay, Mark. so the, the, the follow-up question is, uh, for NGC, are three-year contracts the new norm, given what uh, the president uh, just said? All right, let me, let me take that one for you, Mark, if I may. Um, Anthony, as, as we've taken very careful care to see, what we're doing currently is we're trying, we've begun conversations with the upstreamers. So right now, as Mark pointed out, all the upstream contracts come to an end in 2023. It's our position as a government that we can't wait until 2023 to start negotiations or even close to 2023 to start negotiations because as you would have heard, Yara, Trinjan, many others, everybody needs a line of sight of gas and some level of certainty. So one of the first things I did in the past few weeks upon assuming office is give notice to all of the upstreamers that the conversations for future gas need to start now. Part of that conversation is the length of gas supply contract. And of course, we would like to push for as far a contract as possible into the future to give us a longer line of sight. But that is still in infancy stages and depends on projects coming on board, etc. So right now it's premature to say that and to say that it will be three years. Certainly we don't want three-year term contracts going forward in the future, but we will have to deal with reality as we step forward. Yes, Mark, I, I guess I would add to that, Minister, that of course, technically there's some slight differences between the upstream contracts, but of course we sell gas based on a pool that, 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 that yeah. of course combines contracts. Um, so I think it is, it is wise to start those discussions as early as possible. Um, so that at least we can, you know, as I said in my opening, we, we've been on a, a on a road of of upstream negotiations from 2017 to 19, Correct. and downstream contracts from 2018. Here's another one in 2021. So it's been a, a, a constant, um, um, I would say, activity level in in the NGC to deal with. Um, but it's right; we need to renegotiate in that in that um, in that kind of way. And the answer is as long as we can get it, right? Because I think we, 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 we recognize that for the downstream, obviously, they have investments in turnarounds and a turnaround cycle is, is you know, four years, you know, approximately on average. So you, you really need to, at least for someone to make investments in turnarounds, depending on what year that investment falls in, uh, you need to extend it beyond that as, as best as you can. And that will be the aim. Thank you. I think Anthony's mic is off again. Anthony? Yeah, are you hearing me now? Yes, yes. Okay, so also as a matter of clarification, I'm interested in finding out if uh, the two Yara plants were out of contract, out of gas contract for any time or, or not. When you say the two Yara plants, you mean the two Trinjan plants? Yeah, the two Trinjan plants. Uh, did the gas contract between Trinjan and NGC end and were they extended month to month or quarter to quarter? So I guess I guess I can take that um, there would have been interim agreements that would have been going on with the purpose of um, forging a long-term solution so you don't end up in a situation where you're going on short-term periods, as you know, it's not an ideal situation to be in. Um, and of course, the market is quite volatile and the, and the acquisition cost of gas is also dependent on some of these commodities, as you know. So the, the best thing for all parties is to have a, a longer-term stability, which I think Magnus has also talked about. Thank you.
Any more questions for us, Anthony? Are we good there on your side? Anthony had his hand up for one last one. Yeah, Anthony, a last one? Yeah, mic again, Anthony. Has the formula for the gas price that Trinjan is enjoying now uh, changed uh, in any way? And is there a difference in the price of gas to ammonia as opposed to methanol? But when you say it's changed, um, uh, Anthony, it has changed from from years ago. So the only thing that NGC would have been able to offer would have been based on the upstream contracts that were renegotiated in the last years. Um, so the answer to the question is in terms of the, the, the cost of gas. Yes, I think we've made it no secret that that has certainly gone up. Um, so there would be a difference compared to say post uh, pre-2019 you know um and but here we are in 2021 and i think the parties have found the uh, um you know a, a formula that, that is based on the realities going forward thanks a lot anthony thanks a lot members of the media i, I know there's some hands still up but of course everyone has had an opportunity to to ask their questions and unfortunately we have other engagements so I'd like to really take the opportunity to thank everyone, to thank Magnus, your team at Yara, to thank Karen for the great work you all are doing with Trinjan. And we now need to engage in some discussions as to how we push Trin Trinjan forward. And Magnus, I look forward to including Yara in those conversations. To Conrad and Mark, keep up the good work at NGC um, as we continue to move forward and I look forward to you all coming to me in the next few days with your strategic plans. Uh, as you know, it's, it's at the forefront of my mind. And um, I really look forward to us driving the sector forward and keeping it going. And to members of the media, thank you all as usual for your time here today and, and, and this morning into the afternoon. To our hosts at NGC, Richard, I'm not leaving you out at, from Yara Trinidad. To thank everyone for your participation and today really is the culmination, I know, of a lot of hard work by you all and unfortunately it doesn't go away. We keep it up because we have to keep the sector going for the next few decades. Thank you all very much. And stay safe everyone, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um. <coughs> Can you all send photographs, please? What you want photographs of, Anthony? Of anything, anything to illustrate the story. <laughs> no problem. I'm sure NGC will do so. Take care. Yes, thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Um...